Hey everyone, back in LA. Gonna be playing some more uh, No Limit Hold'em. Gonna try to sign up for 2-3 today as well as 5-5 five, five, because last time the 5-5 five, five took a little while, so I uh, don't wanna be waiting too long this time around, but um, whatever we get first, I'll go with. So yeah, hoping for some good luck. We'll see how it goes. I didn't even have time to record my first hand, unfortunately. We had two pair and we picked up a $150 pot with it, so that was pretty nice. Um, anyways, we're in the small blind here with Ace-4 suited. Uh, we have about 650 behind now. Under the gun raises to $20 and under the gun plus one calls. I decide to defend my small blind here and uh, call the remaining $15 for a total of 20 and the big blind also decides to do the same. So we are now four players headed to the flop, which comes out three, five, king, and two diamonds. I immediately check. And the big blind decides to bet $15. I'm not too mad about our spot here. We do have a gut shot straight draw with the two, and uh, we also have an ace. So if that does come around, we might still make top pair. So, um, you know, not ready to give this pot up yet, but curious to see how the rest of the table responds to this bet. Under the gun thinks for a bit of time, but ultimately decides that they're not interested in playing in this hand anymore. Under the gun plus one makes the call pretty quickly, and I follow suit and make the call as well. We are now three players headed to the turn with a pretty large pot, and a two of hearts comes out on the turn, which is massive. We make our straight. Um, I don't think anyone's going to be expecting this. Big blind leads off with a $35 bet. I'm hoping under the gun plus one raises here, um, but he actually just makes the call, which makes sense. Um, I don't want anyone hitting the the flush, so I think a raise here would have been probably appropriate, but I wanted to also give my opponent a chance to maybe catch up a bit, just in case um, they might have some high cards in their hand. Uh, Nine of Clubs comes out, which is, I don't think improves many of us here. I still have the best hand, and now I know it's time to start betting for value. So I reach for my chips and I let the dealer know that I'm betting $50. I wish I took my time a bit more on this spot and sized the bet appropriately. I think I could have got a lot more out of this hand if I bet higher. Um, I don't think many people are going anywhere with 230 in the pot. So big blind calls and under the gun plus one ends up actually folding this. We flip over the straight and show the big blind the bad news. Uh, they muck their hand and we take down a pretty large pot here. I didn't mention this earlier, but this was a brand new 5-5 game with a $500 max buy-in, which I believe most of us at the table just bought in for. So um, at this point, I am definitely the largest stack and feeling confident going into the rest of the session. I am a little bit mad at myself as well, though, with not betting a bit more, but um, it is what it is. About 10 minutes later, I pick up Ace-3 suited in the low jack with $850 behind. I open raise to $10 and the hijack folds. The decision is now on the cutoff on what they want to do. I'm pretty happy with Ace-3 suited and I don't mind defending my bet here if he does raise me. And uh, that is what he actually ends up doing. He raises to $40, which is quite expensive to me for um, my hand. I think he might uh, have maybe aces or kings, but ultimately I do decide I will take the risk and make the call for $40. It's heads up, everyone else folded. So we are now to the flop. So the flop comes out three ace 10 all clubs uh, I instantly fire off for $50 don't want him chasing a flush draw and also we have a two pair so it's not like we have a horrible hand we can also develop a full house later down on a future street so at this point my opponent takes a while to think uh, I'm thinking he might have a pair of kings in his hand or maybe even a club and he wants to chase the flush draw I gave him a pretty good price I think to chase that flush draw uh, might have bet too little, might have bet too small, not totally sure, still kind of trying to learn the sizing and what, what is uh, appropriate to bet and when to bet it. But um, yeah, ultimately he lays it down, so we take down a pretty nice pot. I'm not mad about the outcome. Uh, I show him my hand, he was a cool guy, I let him know, hey, I had, I had two pair. Um, and yeah, we take down a pretty decent pot. So about 20 minutes goes by of us being a bit card dead and we finally pick up a decent hand. We pick up Jack-9 offsuit in the big blind with $860 behind. Uh, under the gun raises to $10 here. So now we're just waiting for the rest of the table to make a decision. A lot of players were moving in and out of this game. It would be going uh, from like eight players to six players and then back to eight. So that was a bit frustrating, but um, right now I think we have like six players. So everyone folds except the low jack. He makes the call for $10. And I also call for five more dollars to make it 10. And we're off to the flop, which comes out 10, six, seven rainbow. And the pot's at about $35 at this point. 
I am out of position and don't want to show any weakness, so I make a bet of $15 when under the gun calls shortly after me. So my thought process here is I don't want to get bullied out of this pot while I'm out of position, so I bet the $15 in order to maybe block a higher bet and also maybe have uh, one of my opponents fold out of this hand. But we also have a gut shot straight draw, so we're not totally in a bad shape here, and we do have a higher card than what's on the board. Um, so I don't think we're in awful shape. The low jack does end up folding and the nine of hearts come out on the turn. So we now have middle pair. And I suspect we might have the best hand at this point. I put my opponent's range onto some over cards here. Um, it's possible they might have a hand like ace 10, king 10, something that dominates us. But um, I go ahead and make the bet to $20 here just to test them out and they fold. So. Um, I think my suspicion was right on the over cards in their hand and we take down a pot of $90. Not too long after that hand we pick up 10-9 offsuit in under the gun position. I open raise to $10, middle position calls, small blind calls, and then big blind calls. So we have a lot of action pre-flop here. We are now four players headed to the flop and that flop is going to come out 7 jack queen with two diamonds. Pot's at about $40 and we have an open ended straight draw. We also have a backdoor flush draw. I'm feeling good in this spot. I bet $20, middle position calls, and shortly after that, the small blind and big blind fold. We are now two players headed to the turn. I'm really hoping for a card to complete my straight here, and the jack of hearts comes out on the turn, which isn't the worst card to come out because I think this is a pretty good spot for me to bluff in. Uh, based off the story I was telling with the pre-flop aggression and the bet on the flop, um, it is likely yeah, from his point of view that I could have a hand maybe like um, Jack Queen or Jack King. So I go ahead and bet $40 here, um, hoping that he just folds and goes away. Um, I'm thinking, you know, if he does have it, we might make the straight, but um, ultimately he does fold. So we don't even have to get to that point and we take down a decent pot and uh, on to the next one. What's up everybody? Uh, taking a little break right now. We're up about, I think, uh, $375. So doing pretty well, uh, ordered a pizza, gonna go back in and see how it goes. All right, so I sit down after my lunch and I look down at Pocket Queens, um, a great thing to see right after a lunch break. Under the gun, under the gun plus one, middle position and hijack all limp in for $5. But I do have Pocket Queens and I uh, want to raise this pot up a bit here before going into the flop and hopefully get rid of a few players. So I go ahead and uh, make the raise here to $25. The table has been limping a lot uh, throughout the day so I'm hoping to be a bit more aggressive here and get some uh, free money basically before the flop. Under the gun folds and then under the gun plus one makes the call and middle position calls as well shortly after that. So now the decision is on to the hijack who calls a $25 and the small blind folds right after that. So we are now four players headed to the flop with queens in my pocket. At this point, I'm pretty curious at what my opponents have. They all limped in and I was a pre-flop aggressor. So curious how this one plays out, but the flop comes out three, four king with two diamonds. And I go ahead and make a C bet here for $20. I still think queens are pretty good in this spot. Um, there is a chance that my opponents could have a king and a low second card, uh, considering the action that happened pre-flop, but middle position calls the $20 and then um, the hijack calls the $20 as well, so we are now off to the turn. And that turn is going to come out the 10 of hearts. So I think we're in a pretty bad spot here. Um, I'm kind of regretting betting on the flop, especially with the king out at this point. I think it would have been safe to just check all the way through, but I do end up checking here and then the middle position checks as well. And the hijack goes all in for $125 effectively. And uh, I believe he has it. And if he doesn't have it, it's still a possibility that he might have a king or two pair and uh, he doesn't want the flush draw to get there on the river. So he's just shoving. And, um, you know, either way I'm beat. I only have a pair of queens at this point. I don't want to overplay that. I think the best decision is probably for me to fold, but I do think a bit because this guy has been a little bit bluffy all night and it is possible that he could just be bluffing the flush here and have ultimately nothing. Um, but then again, he did limp into the pot pre-flop and um, he might have a, a low flush here, which does have me beat. So um, I am not interested in playing this hand anymore. I go ahead and fold it out which I think is the best decision given my spot. 
What's going on everyone? Uh, wrapping up my session right now in the Commerce in LA. Uh, really good session actually. I have good news and bad news. The good news is we're up about $740 on the session. Bad news is last time you guys saw I was only up about I think 200 or so. Um, unfortunately, I think my phone is due for an upgrade. Uh, it was pretty much overheating the whole time. I try to bring a charger so it doesn't die on me. It's an iPhone 12, so I guess it's like uh, a little outdated, but yeah, so I'm gonna upgrade my phone soon so we can get uh, some longer footage and make sure I could uh, charge it and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, overall, pretty good day. Um, up 740, this is actually the highest I've ever won in one session, so very pumped about that. There was a lot of cool action. Uh, I wish you guys could have seen it, but um, yeah. Uh, pretty loose table. I think I just played very well. I played tight and I, I played uh, correctly. Uh, more importantly, I think about like uh, a week ago or a few days ago, I was at the Hustler and lost a bit. So that was a bit disappointing. So with this win today, we are still positive for the month. I think we're up about like $200 or so for the month. So not bad, uh, feeling pretty good. And uh, next time, I won't have an upgraded phone, but next time hopefully I can get a little bit more footage. I'll try to get my phone upgraded maybe, um, I don't know, sometime this month or something. And uh, yeah, appreciate it. Sorry for the short video. Thanks, guys.